Hi, I'm Mandy Haberman. This is my first invention, the Haberman feeder. I invented it because my daughter was born with feeding difficulties, so if you've had a baby with feeding problems, you might have come across it, but the majority of people won't have seen this one before. I'll show you how it works. You pour the milk, in this case it's water, into the bottle. You take the valve plate and the little valve membrane. You put the little poppet through the valve plate so it becomes one piece, okay? And the valve goes on that side and on the back of it, on the valve plate, there's a little tiny air groove. Now that air groove allows air back into the bottle. Then you take the teat, put it through the collar, and you take the valve and you put that side of it into the teat. And of course you screw the whole thing together. And before you start to feed, you have to get all of the air that's in the teat out and fill the teat with milk. So you squeeze the teat here, you turn it upside down and then let go. So don't forget, let go when it's pointing downwards. You do that a couple of times until the teat is completely filled. And then when it's filled, you can start to feed. Now, if you look very carefully, you'll see that there's some markings on the side here. The longest marking is for fast flow, and that's medium, and that's almost a stop position. So what you do, you position the marking in line with your baby's nose when you give it to the baby. So the baby sucks on the teat. Now the thing about the Haberman feeder is it doesn't work the same way as a conventional bottle. It doesn't work by sucking. It works by suckling, which is how a baby feeds when it's breastfeeding. So its tongue squeezes the milk out of the teat. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. And the liquid in the bottle comes through to replace the milk that's come out of the teat. And if the baby's really got a lot of problems, you can squeeze and release the reservoir there. Now, there's a sort of a natural limit to how hard you can squeeze because that liquid in the teat can't go back into the bottle, so it restricts how much you can squeeze, and it's about a quarter of a teaspoonful. As I'm doing that, can you see the bubbles coming into the bottle? So what's happening is there's no vacuum inside that bottle, there's no negative pressure because as you're squeezing the liquid out, that air groove allows the air to bubble back in. Now this makes the feeder completely anti-colic because normally when a baby sucks on a bottle they go suck, suck, suck and then they release their lips to allow air to go back in. But the teat never empties out, it's always being replenished by liquid from the bottle and no air is going in the teat. So they suckle, not suck, they suckle on the mouthpiece and they never have to release their lips so they don't swallow air as they're feeding. Because that valve separates the liquid in the teat from the liquid in the bottle and liquid doesn't compress very easily, it means that the baby can feed much more efficiently so even a baby with a really poor suck can manage to feed successfully with the feeder. So that's the Haberman feeder and that's the product that's been used in hospitals around the world for over 20 years now. But I designed it to emulate what happens when a baby's breastfeeding. And Tracy Hogg, the baby whisperer, she identified it as being the closest feeder that you can get to breastfeeding. So suddenly there was a huge cult of mums with healthy babies without feeding problems all trying to find the Haberman feeder and they were having to go to um, medical suppliers to buy it. So over the last couple of years I've been developing a new product and that's a feeder with all the benefits of the Haberman feeder plus some more but it's been designed especially for the commercial market which means that every mum and every baby can benefit from the feeder.